In this video, Ryan, one of our lead builders, will be sharing a common problem that comes up on site and ways that this can be prevented. So a common problem that we experience on site is when somebody comes to us with a set of plans that have already been designed instead of going through an integrated design and build process. Sometimes those plans are incomplete and this can result in delays and potential extra costs on your project. So the purpose of this video is to help you set realistic expectations on your next project. We're gonna show you some of the problems that we encountered on this project and how we handled them. So this is a complete house renovation with a rear addition in the back. It's approximately 300 square feet. Uh, and then there's a two floor addition on the side above a garage. We demoed the interior and are currently prepping the addition for the installation following the concrete pour. Problem one. The plans called for an extension of the current roof across the addition with a matching pitch and gable and an intersecting hip roof for the front of the roof addition where the garage juts out from the house approximately 24 inches. So this assumes that we could keep the existing roof pitch, but because the front of the house jutted out like that in the addition, we couldn't. We had to have a new roof pitch. So the challenge there was transitioning from the existing roof pitch to a new roof pitch. Normally when you come across that, you transition at a hip or a gable. In this case, it was flat roof to flat roof. So to solve this problem, when we got to that transition section, we had to build up some of the rafters right where the old roof met the new roof and transition it in such a way so that they blended together where they met. It didn't really match the drawings that were given to us by the designer, but this is just another example of, of having to think on the fly when you get something that doesn't quite work out the way the designer intended it to. Probably took an extra day of work to figure out this transition and of course added to the cost of the build. Something like this might seem like a very minor detail on the page, but in real world situations like this, it can add up. So when we're framing the back wall on the second floor, the plans on the exterior and the interior show the window lines up. However, the window that we're supposed to use is existing. On the exterior, the top of the window is supposed to line up with all of the other windows. The bottom of the sill is supposed to be the same height as all the other windows. Because that floor drops a foot, one of those things couldn't be possible. The result is we ended up having to buy a new window to accommodate the increased size that we had to frame. This involved extra cost that the client was not expecting, but it's one of those details that might have been caught had we been involved in a design build process. Our biggest problem that we're dealing with is a problem that we're still dealing with. It had to do with soil conditions for the back addition. It's something that no one could have foreseen. Uh, what happened was when we went to do our excavation to get our soil sample, get approval from our engineer to build our uh, addition, he failed the soil test. Uh, it didn't have any bearing capacity. This resulted in doubling the budget for what we had for the pad for the addition. With this new design, it involves a lot of helical piles. I think there's 12 of them in total. And plus the extra cost in building extra uh, long walls, the grading for it, there's just extra costs. And it's what we had to do to make the addition work. We look forward to sharing this project when it's done. Uh, in the meantime, we're projecting the finish of this project to be around end of November, early December, if nothing else goes wrong. Thank you for watching this video. I'm super grateful that you are here with us. As you heard from the boots on the ground, having an integrated design process is super important for a project to go smoothly. I know it's tough sometimes, but time needs to be given to this process and each person needs to take responsibility for their part. So that is the general contractor, the designer, the energy advisor, and the client. If you're a contractor and looking for support on how to manage clients, we have the perfect course for you at the Conscious Builder Academy. It's called Keys to Managing Clients. In this course, you'll learn how to build a relationship that your clients and you benefit from, so both sides benefit from, how to avoid burning bridges, and how to stop wasting your energy in the wrong places. Head to ConsciousBuilderAcademy.com to sign up. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to live consciously.